Today, we are talking about passwords. One of everybody's favorite topic is passwords and password management. So let's talk about passwords for a second. What is passwords? Where do they come from? What do they mean? Why do we use them? So passwords go way, 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 way back. It just made logical sense to do the exact same thing with computers. So you would put in your username, that was visible, and then you'd put in your uh, password. And your password give you access to stuff that not everybody was supposed to have access to. All made sense, all worked, was all logical, all well and good. There was a small problem with that, and that was there's really not that many words in the English language. So I just Googled here to search how many words are there in a dictionary, and a dictionary has about 171,476 words. So that's your average English dictionary has that many words. Now here's the thing. So you're looking at less than 200,000 words. Now, for a computer to run through 200,000 checks of something takes like a blink of an eye, seconds. And that's even with older computers, much less like modern computers. I mean, modern computers do billions of calculations in a second. So 200,000 is nothing. So the problem that you would run into is if you just had a dictionary and you used a simple password, all you had to do was have the computer just run through all of those names, all of those words, see if that password was being used. If it was, you got in, and that was it. Problem solved. Now, I think that they made a mistake in the early days by saying password. What they really should have done was passphrase or passcode or something like that because people get hung up on this idea of creating a password. Well, you don't want a word. You want some kind of a code, some kind of a phrase, some kind of sequence of characters. I would go with code because for every little character that you make, first of all, for the words, if you just do a word, obviously that's no good at all. Because like I said, 200, 000, less than 200,000 words, those computers just blow through that in no time. So how about uh, we add in a couple characters, like a number, for example. Well, again, if you add like a four digit number or something like that to the end, you can go through all of those passwords, all of those words in the English language, plus you add a digit to the end and then, you know, go through all that. That's not, you know, that's just nine extra uh, characters. Now, here's the thing that compounds, of course. So it's 200,000 to the power of uh, nine in order to try all those different characters. So you try each word with that one character, with that number one at the end, then each word, so that's another 200,000 with a, with a two at the end, then each word with another character, three at the end, and you just keep going that way. So that's good. That's going to take a lot longer, right? And then if you do a four-digit code, then that's going to make it even longer than that. And then, again, you're going to continue to do that. Now, and then eventually you're going to hit to millions and millions of tries. But again, that's not... That's millions and millions aren't going to take a computer very long to try. So now we're going to add in some characters. So the characters, again, for every character that you add in there, then you're adding a little bit of complexity. And that means that the algorithm is going to have to try that much harder. So you add an exclamation point or you require to add a, a, an, um, you know, an ampersand or a, a, an asterisk, something like that. Great. All right. So now we're getting even more complex passwords. Let's add another layer of complexity. Let's say instead of doing a password, we do a passphrase. So maybe your password was something like happy. All right, so we're going to add some numbers. So we're going to do happy, one, two, three. All right, great. We just made it a little bit more complicated. Still too simple. So we're going to add in a couple characters. So we're going to do exclamation point, happy, one, two, three, ampersand. All right, now... Now we're, now we're getting a lot more complicated, but still we've got that word happy in there. That's still pretty, and you can, and this is the whole thing. You can memorize that. You can remember that. It's actually not that difficult to make a password that's almost uncrackable if you just do a random series of characters. So if you just did like 25 random characters, that would be a solid password, a passcode. Again, trying to get away from this idea of a word, but then you'd never be able to memorize that. You'd never be able to understand that. And work with that. So maybe we can do a pass uh, phrase. So instead of just happy, you could say, let's say it's November 3rd, and you're gonna say our password is gonna be 
exclamation point. I am happy on NOV3, Exclam exclamation point, one, two, three, four, ampersand. Now you've got a nice big long password. It's got some complexity in it and it's got some characters and you can remember it. So now we're getting somewhere. So let's do a phrase, great. Let's do a, some characters, again, great. Let's do some numbers. You can pick any number, any series of numbers that you can remember. The more the numbers, the better. So maybe it's the combination to your high school locker. Only you would know that, right? So you can throw that onto the end or onto the beginning. And with that phrase and using that system, you can come up with some pretty com complex passwords. Let me throw in just another little level of complexity. Let's say that's your password for Facebook and you just add the word Facebook to the end. That way, you're not using that same password on every website. So, you wouldn't use that password on your Netflix website. You would use a version of that that has the word Netflix at the end. There we go. So, you have a super complicated password. You have it customized to the one site that you're working with, and it's easy to remember. Now, why do we do all this stuff? Why do we make it so complicated? It's not just that hackers try to get into sites, okay? They don't just, so sites will limit, like if you try your password five times, most sites will stop you from trying again. So it's not like they can really do 200,000 checks in a minute, okay? So that's not really what we're trying to avoid because them just hacking in, trying a bunch of different passwords randomly on sites is probably not going to produce anything. But what hackers sometimes will do is get databases full of passwords. Now the passwords that are stored in databases are encrypted. They're usually encrypted in one way and that means you take the password and you change it to a code. And that code is only convertible one way. In other words, that code can't be turned back into the password. So you get the password, you convert it to a code, can only be now now you're thinking you're wondering why would you only want it to be converted one way well you run that same conversion on the password that's entered and see if the codes match that's how they check and see if the passwords are the same so you take a password you encrypt it one way and then when the user enters their password you encrypt it the same way and then you check them and you see if they're the same code. That's how you know they're the same password. So you can't decrypt them. So these databases store these, these codes that are called hashes. They store this data. So if, if any of it ever gets leaked or stolen or hacked or anything else, the passwords are not visible even to the hacker. They can't decrypt them. But what they can do, what they can do, is go through a series of passwords and a series of brute force attacks to see if they can find the match, right? And once they find the match and you're using the same password on multiple sites, now they have access to your password on a bunch of different sites. And that's pretty scary. Now I mentioned before that the other thing that you can do to protect your passwords is to use just random characters, just random 20 digit characters. Those are super strong passwords, but you can't remember them. But what you can do is use a password management system. Password management system is a great tool that usually integrates on your phone, on your web browser, and a bunch of different locations. That you, It's a vault that's encrypted that you can store all your passwords, and usually you can decode it by some kind of either biometric or some kind of a tool like a card or a key or something that you can use to decrypt all of your passwords. So that stores it as a virtual little vault. You can go in there and grab your passwords, make every password completely random on every set site, and then you never have to remember them. Of course, the downside to something like that is if you ever do lose your key, then you know you can't get into your password. So that's a little scary for people, but that's a great alternative. So with that said, you can always talk to us at Advantage Technology. We can explain this kind of stuff a little bit clearer to you, give you some options and some ideas for password management systems, and continue to help you stay secure out there on the internet. 
Thanks for watching today. Please do like and share if you found anything interesting here today. Follow us and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow.